Hi folks, we had a job come in for a customer who wanted a part like this made, but with some changes, I think we got it done. Let's walk through how we did it. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. First things first, new component. I'll call it ring, and we're gonna save our file. Saving the file is important since that starts auto-saving it in the background. This is an awesome Fusion Friday on const sketch constraints. It's so cool how to make use of it. The task at hand is to take this part from the customer. It's about a four and a half inch OD, but instead of, I think there's 60 or 100 rings here, they want 23 rings. They don't want this outside perimeter. And then they want to know where a seven millimeter rod will pass through uh, at what diameter. So there's some pretty cool math that we can do here really easily. First thing we'll do, C for circle. I'm gonna sketch on this plane right here. We'll start, again, I don't worry about the dimension, I just create the geometry. So I've got my outside and I'll do my inside. So we said the ring here, outside around it is 4.5 and the center is half inch. D for dimension, click here, place the dimension, 4.5, click on this guy, place the dimension, 0.5. Now, we need 23 of these grooves around the perimeter. Hit L for line, and I'm going to create a line from the center point of our circle all the way up here. And I'm going to I'll click here and place it and see how I hit escape once. Sorry to get out of see how it's sketching a new line. See when I place this line, it gave me that constraint there. That's the horizontal vertical constraint that you see listed right here. And I know you may not know that or you may be saying, John, how the heck was I supposed to know that? Well, uh, a couple things. One, you'll kind of learn what these constraints look like, but also see how it's black. Black means um, I cannot move the line. It's fully constrained. Uh, that's actually interesting. It's not fully constrained on its length. But uh, if I had done, let me undo that. If I had done a line over here, see how it stays blue? That's because it knows I can still do this. So what I can do when it's in that position, click on the line, and click horizontal vertical, boom. I'm gonna click that line again and hit X on the keyboard, turns it into a dotted line. That's a construction line. So now what I wanna do is hit L again and sketch a line up here, uh, just anywhere is fine. And now we're gonna hop into Excel very real quick. This is really simple math. There's 360 degrees in a circle. We want 23 grooves, so that means 360 divided by 23 means every groove is 15.65 degrees. But if we look at our photo, you'll see there's a groove and then there's a solid. So each 15.65 um, degrees would give you 23 instances. We've really got 46 because you got 23 opens and 23 closed. That makes sense? So I'm gonna do this divided by two. So 7.826 or whatever. Now, the way I'm going to do this is actually with two lines. So I place another line over here. So I'm going to create a dimension that's the angle between here and here. So I'm actually going to do half that amount. So divided by two. So what we end up with is 360 divided by 23 times four. Does that make sense? If not, pay attention or follow along here and we'll, sh we'll show you again. So D, I'm going to click my construction line here, and I'm going to click this line here. So it gives me this 5.9 degrees. I'm going to instead type 360 divided by open paren 23 times 4, close paren. So perfect, that gives me the 3.9 degrees that I was looking for. I'll do the same here, and except instead of typing anything in, I'm just going to click that. So this represents, um, 
Well, I, I tell you what, if it doesn't make sense, I would say rewatch that and, and see if you can understand. Let's go ahead and finish this out, and then we'll talk about that again. So uh, I want the rings. Actually, I he didn't give a dimension um, here, but let's just say C for circle. Let's say it's th a three-inch start. So I've got this area here that I've selected is going to be the equivalent of the clear space here. And again, they did not want a perimeter running around it. Now they want this to be radius in here. So this is so cool. I love this. We'll hit C for circle. And I'm going to place a circle on this line. See how it snaps to that construction line? And not going to dimension it, not going to snap at anything. Just created a circle. Awesome. If I hit escape once, you see I can drag this circle in and out, make it bigger and smaller, and I can drag it up and down. Now, click tangent. I want this circle to be tangent to here, and I want it to be tangent to here. Take a look, folks. We just created the perfect tangential uh, fillet, if you will, for this feature. Awesome. Let's go ahead and hit Q for press pull. And I'm going to extrude out, let's see here, I want to extrude out this, this. Actually, I'm going to extrude out everything for now. And we'll say it's 0.05. Now I want to extrude cut our shape. I'll expand the ring right here. See this uh, little arrow? I'll expand our sketches. And I'll turn sketch one back on. Now I can see what we had. I'm going to hit Q for press pull. I'm going to pick, oop, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to, see how we, um, our sketch is on the bottom. I wanted to extrude this shape the other way. So I'm going to right click, edit, and I'll type negative 0.05. That leaves my sketch at the top, which is just con more convenient for me. I'll hit Q for press pull, and I'll, I want to extrude down those two things. I'll just drag it down through all the way. Turn my sketch off, this light bulb right here. So in theory, I should be able to rev uh, rev ex uh, pattern this around 23 times, and it should be perfect spacing. I'll go to Create, Pattern. Circular pattern. I'm going to choose the pattern type as a feature pattern or pattern features. And then instead of clicking, clicking anything up here, I'm actually going to click down here. This was the feature where we extruded that shape out. I'll click here to select my axis. It's going to be, uh, you could pick the blue line. I, I like to pick the circle here, just habit. Uh, actually, honestly, the blue line is better because there's a chance that you delete that circle. So uh, the blue line is always, the z-axis there is always going to stay. And I'll do it 23 times. And click, uh, let's see here, click OK. And if we take a look, that should be perfectly even spaced around. Awesome. Now their question was, at what point does a 7 millimeter rod um, and actually, you know, we changed, I changed the number of grooves just for the sake of this example. So it may not be what we'll just see. It may not be, make sense. C for circle. Click right here. And, you know, I want a construction line back up the middle. So I'll actually hit L for line. And sketch a line from here up to here. Hit escape once. Click the line. And hit X. I'll hit C for circle, and I'll sketch a circle on the line, and I'll type in 7 mm. That creates a 7 millimeter circle. Oh yeah, we'll be okay. Perfect. So take a look. I can, I can, I've got a 7 millimeter circle, and I, I can't change its size, but I can drag it up and down that line, and you can see this is perfect. It does intersect there and they want to know at what point at what diameter does it is it perfectly touching all I got to do click tangent click on the circle and click right here that snaps it into place 
and I could draw a line. Honestly, I like to do a circle, just visually easier for me. So I'll hit C for circle, click here, and I'll snap it right to there. I'm gonna click on both these things and hit X to change them into construction geometry, just so I know that these were just that, construction geometries. And I'll hit D for dimension, click here, and that tells me, this is telling me it's over constraint, that's okay. I just want a driven dimension, it's an output. And that's telling me at 4.038 inches, the center point of a seven millimeter rod is perfectly tangential to, in terms of its fit into there. How cool is that? That was the main point of my lesson, but if you guys wanna stick around, I will also do the four, um, what do you call them, you know, patterns here to line up our, these are for a through hole screw. So stop sketch, turn that off. Okay, hit C for circle, click here. Now the um, outside circle is 1.34375. This was just given to me by the customer. And the inside was 1.03125. So those two dimensions represent the outside and inside edge of these things. And I also know there's one eighth of an inch in between each one. And there's obviously four of them. So let's take a look here. If I hit C for circle and this is where I really don't like the snap feature. This to me is really scary. So I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn off the sketch grid as well. Uh, this may not be the most efficient way to do it, but I like it for now. And I'm welcome to better uh, ways to do it. L for line and sketch a line straight up. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker, folks. Um, it, cut, repeating some of the same, techno or same technologies, the same methods we did in the beginning here. Uh, I want a T for trim. I want to trim this away. So I've got a line right here. That little line, I'll hit X for oops, X for construction. That lets me snap a circle center two, and likewise put it tangential. So um, ooh, it's not interesting. I wanted to. I was wondering why it was blue. Um, it's not fully constrained. I want the center point here, hold down control, and the center here, I'll right click. I want them to be horizontal vertical. That locks that straight up above. I'm gonna create another one. C for circle, and let's see here. You know what I can do? I'll just create it way too big, that's okay. I'll say um, this one and that one should be equal. And now I'm gonna drag it inside or closer to inside. That way when I do tangent, click he here and here, that way it locks it um, inside. If I had left it out here and hit tangent, it would have put it as a tangent circle outside here. Hit select. And now if you take a look, I've got this circle that I can drag around just like so. Okay. Uh, here's the cool part. L for line, click here, and I'll click right here. That put a line tangent to the edge of that. In other words, actually, let me do that a different way just to show you. L for line, I'm gonna go all the way past it, turn it into a construction line, and I'll say I want tangency between that line and that circle. So now I know this line is the total outside edge of here. Now to add in the 1 8 inch space, so that's this little gap here between each one, I'm actually gonna go ahead and hit C for circle. And I'm gonna sketch a circle that snaps along the center path here. And I'll hit uh, X to turn it into a construction line. L for line, and I'm gonna sketch a line between here and I'm gonna snap it down here so that it's a it's a cord. It's you know it's touching the edge of this circle as well. See that tangent right there? Uh, or sorry, that's a coincident. So if I hit D for dimension. I can set this. Oops, it's a glitch right now in Fusion. Right now, if I come out, that's the, not the dimension I want. That would be the just overall Y height of it. I actually want to click right here, even though I can't see anything, 
and that's going to let me site pinpoint one, two, five, um, except, you know what? I just realized that's not what I want to do either. I have goofed. Hold on. I want to do a line L from here over to here. I want it from the outside edge. There we go. Click this, place it, and 0.125. Perfect. So that gives me my, my 1 8 inch space. And you'll notice I can still move this whole thing around, but that line stays perfectly uh, uh, tangent or in line. So hit L for line, click here, go out to here, construction. Now click tangent between that and, or you know what, we could have it be coincident, but um, actually maybe that is better to do coincident between that point and here. So now if I drag this construction line, I'm moving the location of this whole thing. D for dimension, oops, D for dimension between, I won't be having it. See how I have that line selected? That's why it's giving me a dimension when I start. So I'll drag a little box here to deselect everything. Now, D for dimension, click here, click here, and guess what? That's just 90 degrees. So that 90 degrees, or because we've got four of them, that's what, I, that's what 90 degrees is, includes the 1 8 inch gap. Now I can hit Q for press pull, click one, two, three, drag it all the way down, okay, create pattern circular. What's my object? It's this guy right here that we just extruded through. What's my axis? My blue line. And I want four of them. And boom. And if we want to check it, I'll hit C for circle. Click right here. Type in 0.125. And if we just drag this one eighth inch, one eighth inch circle around, you can see even, 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 and even. We could do that with actually tangencies and so forth, but I'm just trying to give you guys the idea. So I hope you enjoyed that Fusion 360 tutorial. Pretty cool part that if you didn't, uh, if you didn't sort of know how to uh, handle some basic CAD constraints, it would be really difficult, but Fusion 360 and Sketch Constraints makes it pretty easy. Take care, folks. If you did enjoy this, I appreciate the thumbs up, liking it. Uh, if you guys want to support our channel on Patreon as little as a dollar a month, we really appreciate that. Otherwise, take care. See you next Friday.